from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Mrs. Peel was in John Steed's apartment that morning when the doorbell rang. Mrs. Peel opened the door to find herself staring at the postman. Good morning, miss. Uh, Rage is it parcel there. Uh, just down here, will you? Please. Yes, certainly. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, miss. Mrs. Peel moved back into the room. Ronnie Westcott's body had been removed from behind the city. Uh, Mrs. Peel sat down and studied the parcel. On the back was a label. She read, B. Bumble and Company. A gift from George Reed. Best British honey. Now, what the devil does that mean? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. So many housewives have discovered that the cleaning power of cold water Omo gives them sparkling clean results. Mrs. Joyce Whelan of East London has this to say. I've tried it. And it works beautifully. I've tried it on my children's clothes, on the general wash, and I noticed straight away that things were cleaner. Since mm -hmm. then, I, I will have used nothing else but cold water Omo. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy, moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode two of this story, in which Emma Peel has a taste of honey, and John Steed finds himself playing the opening moves of the fantasy game. John Steed and Emma Peel, returning to Steed's apartment after a quite splendid all-night party, found a dying undercover agent, Ronnie Westcott, lying behind the settee. Before he died, Ronnie managed to gasp out the fact that his fellow agent, George Reed, had been killed. He muttered something about genie and honey and the fact that full information could be found in George Reed's rooms. Steed had gone to the rooms and been attacked by a man in a stocking mask. In the following fight the man had got away after Steed had thrown him through the window and left Steed with a curious oriental dagger. Steed upon searching the rooms realized that all the important information had been destroyed. He'd also discovered a cupboard filled with jars of honey all similarly marked, Best British Honey. Just like the package Mrs. Peel was holding. Now, why the devil should George Reed send Steed a jar of honey? Hello? Ah, glad to know, Mrs. Peel. What's the news, Steed? Someone beat me to George Reed's rooms. Nasty creature wearing a mask and suffering from halitosis. Just as well as wearing a mask, really. He got away leaving me with a ripped jacket and a curious dagger. Hmm. What about all the gem that the two agents had collected? Burned. So we don't know what they were on to. Not at the moment. Reed seems to have had a bit of a sweet tooth. He's got a whole cupboard filled with jars of honey. Honey? Steed, you've just had a parcel through the post. It's a jar of honey sent by George Reed. What? Ah, well, that settles it. Ronnie Westcott said the word honey before he died. And there could be something contained in these jars. I've got to go through them all. It'll be a long job. Right. I'll pay a visit to B. Bumble and Company, makers of best British honey. Be a busy bee, Steed, won't you? Bye-bye. The Turkish gentleman, who was known as Arkady, was a health fiend and spent a considerable number of hours in the local health centre. He was there, concealed to his neck in a steam box, when Vincent reported his recent encounter with Steed. So you left him there? That was very foolish, Vincent, very foolish. 
Now grab that towel and wipe my forehead. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, but I did destroy the files, Mr. Arcadi. And nevertheless, there may be a general hue and cry. We must continue to cover all traces. Yes, Mr. Arcadi. The honey shop, Bernie. Uh, yes, sir. Now go with Vincent. Vincent, take Bernie with you. You seem unable to look after yourself. Now take him and go to the honey shop. Check up there. You know what you have to do. Yes, Mr. Arcadi. And don't fail this time. And tell him to get me out of this sweat box, please. Now. <laughs> So, both Mrs. Peel and the uh, opposition both made their way to the curious establishment of B. Bumble and Co. Outside the building hung the sign, Homemade Honey from Hilariously Happy Hives. Mrs. Peel raised an exquisitely curved eyebrow. Her lips twitched into a smile as she opened the door. Anyone at home? Obviously, no one in the hive. Who's there? Who's there? Ah, good morning, good morning, good morning, dear lady, good morning. Good morning. Mrs. Peel found herself confronted by a rotund, cheerful little man who wore a beekeeper's hat with a veil and a long white coat. Oh, forgive me. I've been attending to my little charges, my bees, buzzing round their hives, so to speak. Oh, must be exhausting work. Oh, but rewarding, you know. Yes, 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 yes. Reward. Always at your service. Oh? Treat my little bees like little children, for after all, make bumper, bumper honey. Now, dear lady. Can you arrange that? But of course. Uh, that's what encircles the globe. Syrup in Sweden, nectar in Niasaland, honey in the Himalayas. You just give me the address, and I'll dispatch it post haste. How much do you wish to send? Well, just a jar or two. Of uh, which particular kind? You see, our six-legged friends are very versatile. I have 365 different kinds of honey. <laughs> just imagine. Breakfast toast for a whole year and never the same flavor twice. Except in leap year. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> quite so, quite so, quite so. <laughs> well, I thought this would be rather nice. Mrs. Peel produced the honey jar sent to Steed by post. She handed it to Bumble, who peered at it short-sightedly. Uh, oh, yes, yes. It was at this point that the shop door opened. Vincent and Bernie entered. Oh, I'll be with you soon. Won't keep you a moment, gentlemen. Now, let me see, let me see. Mm, yes, strength three, pure syrup without wax. Uh, two jars, you said. Well, now, if you'll just put the address on these labels... Yes, of course. Um, that jar was sent to me by a friend of mine. Uh, Mr. George Reed. Vincent, who had been studying bottles of honey on various shelves, immediately took notice. Perhaps you know him. Mr. George Reed? Reed, Reed, Reed. Oh, oh no, dear lady, I I'm sure you'll understand. We, we get so many customers, you know, so many. But this was sent only the day before yesterday. The postmark on the package says... Oh, the day before yesterday. Uh, well, in that case, of course, I wouldn't remember him. And you, dear lady, must be mistaken. But I'm not. I can't be. Ooh, but you are. The day before yesterday, I was at the Baranian Embassy making a personal delivery of my delicious honey. And this shop, dear lady, was shut. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Now, will that be all? Yes. Yes, thank you. You will see that the honey is dispatched right away, won't you? Oh, of course, of course. With Bumble, there's never a fumble. Never fear, dear lady, never fear. I'll try not to. Granny, follow her. Follow the girl. You know what to do. Right. And now, dear sir, what can I do for you? Just keep quiet to start with. Vincent pointed the muzzle of his gun into the short, fat man's stomach. Get behind the counter. Quick. Come on, move. Poor old Steed. He'd been investigating the contents of those honey jars for hours. He was still clad in the dinner jacket from the party of the night before. Lots of empty jars surrounded him as he pitched yet another quantity of honey down the sink in George Reed's kitchen. The telephone rang. Steed resisted the desire to wipe his fingers on his torn jacket. He licked them instead and headed for the phone. Hello? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, is that Mr. Reed? Mr. George Reed? Uh, speaking, who is this? Uh, we haven't actually met, but I am Ponsonby Hopkirk. Oh, yes. I, I understand that you made an appointment to see me at the QQF this morning. Well, I wonder if you'd mind making it a bit later. Say, say, say 12 o'clock. Would that be all right? Uh, oh, yes, uh, yes, perfectly. Uh, good, good, good. I'll see you later then. Uh, 
Uh, uh, Mr. Hopkirk, uh, Mr. Hopkirk, uh, this is silly of me, but uh, the uh, Q QF, I, <laughs> silly, I, I've quite forgotten the address. Uh, Beaver Street, Mr. Deed, uh, 10 Beaver Street. Uh, yes, I know, but, uh, hello? Uh, are you there? Hello? <laughs> the Q QF, Beaver Street? <laughs> Beaver Street is in Westminster, a short street leading down to the Thames. Steed had little difficulty in finding it. He parked outside, and slipping his overcoat over the torn dinner jacket, he approached a door which read, The QQF Inc. Knock and enter. Steed did so. Steed found himself in the passageway leading to the Arabian Room. Soft carpets clung to the walls, tapestries draped them, and there was the heavy smell of incense. Hmm? Back in the Middle East after all these years. And the difference is that it's so badly lit. Not even a red light inside. Oh, well. Steed moved forward, and pushing aside the drape over the archway, entered the main room. It appeared to be empty. A dry cough from behind a Moorish screen made him swing round. <coughs> oh, I beg your pardon. I, I was looking for a Mr. Hopkirk. I am Napoleon. Huh? At least that is whom I'm about to become. Please do not disturb me. Steed, peering through the gloom, saw the reclining figure of a man dressed as Napoleon lying on a divan. Steed approached. Uh, look, I'm, I'm terribly sorry about that retreat from Moscow, and I, I don't wish to disturb your dreams about Josephine, but I, I am still looking for Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk. Uh, Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk of the QQF? Ah, did I hear my name mentioned? Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk. Uh, Mr. Reed, isn't it? Mr. George Reed. Uh, yes, uh, that is... Uh, uh, yes. Let, let me take you by the hand, Mr. Reed. Well, if you insist. Uh, welcome to the QQF. Uh, doubly welcome. Uh, you're not in a great hurry, are you? Uh, well, uh, you'll wait. You, you, you'd like tea? Coffee, perhaps? Or a drink? A drink. Right, right away, right away. Ponsonby Hopkirk reached out a hand and took up what appeared to be a replica of an Aladdin's lamp. He rubbed it suddenly. Hey, presto. Open sesame and all those camp sayings. <laughs> Look! Steed looked. Appearing through the haze of smoke stepped an attractive, scantily dressed young lady. She advanced towards him. Would you like something? Uh, well, I... Uh, How do you like my little genie? Genie? The service with a smile, eh? We live up to our name. QQF. Quite, quite fantastic. We live out everyone's fantasies for them. And so relieve the emotional tensions. Uh, tell me, are there any fantasies we can do for you? Uh, well, at the moment, I think I've got my brain full. Uh, do you mind if I sit down and think all this out, Mr. Ponsonby Hopkirk? Uh, Pepsodent has Erlium, an amazing discovery that actually polishes teeth so sparkling clean and white, dulling film can't find a hole. Feel the difference with your tongue. You wonder where the dullness went, then you polish your teeth with Pepsodent. New Pepsodent, the white toothpaste you can feel working. Pepsodent, 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 Pepsodent. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adnall, say... I wash every single thing in cold water anode. Anything that's washable come out spotlessly clean. Yes, OMO cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.